surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, they're cheering and praying for you to become the people God has made you to be. You know, with, with the exception of shame, most of that stuff in some respects was then, and this is now. We've got an entirely new set of challenges. An entirely new set of challenges. God is calling you to lead us into the 21st century. The church is in the midst of a sea change, the likes of which we haven't seen in 500 years. We are in the middle of another reformation, and God is calling us to respond, to take our place in the line of in the splendor, to take the baton from those who have run the race so faithfully, and to move forward. Friend, the time to lead is now. It is right now. In everything that you do, the time to lead is now. The time to speak is now. The time to find your voice is now. The time to love is now. The time to sow the seeds of compassion and justice and reconciliation and forgiveness and grace is right now. We are called, as Gandhi said, to become the change we want to see in the world. Because if we do that, we're going to become a movement again. And we need a movement right now. Services, teachers, or as business people. Some, some of you, God has called and given you the gifts to make obscene amounts of money, and you can use that for the common good of God's kindness. And our God Methodist Church is located in Nashville. <laughs> They gave him a day to explore the city. Now, London is a city of over 10 million people. You don't like to get London in a day. But, fortunately for him, he was staying in a hotel on Aldersgate Street. The same Aldersgate Street, for those of you that are laughing or in the know, where Wesley had his awakening experience, where Wesley's heart was strangely warm. And also, fortunately for him, the City of London, the City of London Museum, is also on Aldersgate Street. So he thought, perfect, I'll just go to the museum and get as much as I can in my day off. So he goes to the museum, he pays his money, and he's in good, good fortune because they're showing an exhibit called London Through the Century. And he goes, and each, each kind of epoch had its own time period. So he goes into the first one, which is London in the Mesolithic time. And uh, it's got uh, Stonehenge and Druids. I think that's pretty easy. He goes to the next one, which was London in the Roman time. A lot of infrastructure was being built. Roads were happening. You know, the, the Roman Empire kind of peaked out uh, in its extension in England. He goes to the next room, which is London during the time of the medieval age. And he learns about Thomas Cranmer and the Book of Common Prayer. He's kind of excited. He's just a day. He's a big deal. And uh, he gets to learn about Henry and his eight wives. I don't know, I start to lose count, I start with ones I like to uh, And he thinks that's pretty great, and uh, that came out all wrong. And uh, then he <laughs> then went to the next, went to the next room, which was London at the beginning of the 18th century. And there was a plaque on the floor. And the plaque said, in the beginning of the 18th century, London was a place that was riddled with crime, grime, disease and addictions of every sort. And without the work of John Charles Wesley and the Methodists, London would have been a much worse place at the beginning of the 19th century. These were the people who changed London. And so he goes into the room and he sees John Wesley's journal, Charles' manuscript, and he's really kind of moved by it. Really, really is just doing something. <laughs> he finishes up the conference, hops on the plane across the pond, lands at DFW, our, our massive airport, and uh, starts to drive home. And as he's driving home, he passes a Methodist church. And this still small voice within him pleads to God. To God. And he 
and he passed another Methodist church, and it got a little bit louder. And the boy said, God, do it again. And he passed another Methodist church, and still louder, God, do it again. And we have a lot of Methodist churches in Dallas. <laughs> he passed another Methodist church, and it was louder. He was still, God, do it again. Are you feeling what I'm saying? God, do it again. Someone say it with me, please. God, do it again. God, do it again. God, make us a people of love. God, do it again. God, make us a people ready to give our lives in service to our neighbor. God, do it again. Make us be a people who are just so in love with you that the Christ in us shines out into the world. God, do it again. Make us be a people who love our enemies. God, do it again. Make us be a people filled with Ubuntu. God, do it again. God, make us a movement again. God, do it again. There's something about it. Almost 300 years ago, God used John and Charles Wesley and a bunch of semi-rebellious <coughs> to change not just London, but the world. And I believe, I so believe, I hope and pray that God is going to impute college students to do it. Yeah. It's not going to be the council of bishops. Yeah. It's not going to be large church initiatives. Yeah. It's not going to be 33-year-old pastors. God's going to use you to do it again. And we can shout, God, do it again all that we want. But we've got to know that God is talking right back to us saying, do it again. <laughs> do it again. My precious and beloved child, I love you. Do it again. I want to partner with you. Do it again. In the name of our Creator, our Liberator, and Sustainer, let all God's people say it.